This is not borrowed time. This is birthright time. Why are people rotting away? It's because they were blindsided by their extended lifespan. It's not because of their age. They just didn't know how to take care of themselves to ensure quality life. Learn to love the things that are good for you and make them your new lifestyle. Welcome to the 100 Year Lifestyle Podcast, dedicated to you and your loved ones living at 100% for 100 years and beyond. I'm your host, Dr. Eric Plasker. Welcome, everybody, to the 100-Year Lifestyle, where we are transforming health and longevity worldwide so that you and your loved ones can live, truly live at 100% for 100 years and beyond. Welcome back from a hiatus. We've just taken a hiatus. We've taken some playtime. You know how we talk about primetime, prep time, playtime. Well, we've taken some playtime, some traveling, creativity, off the charts, lots of new resources that we've been creating for you, for your loved ones, for your family, your friends, your work, your businesses, all of that, bringing this new paradigm to the world, to you, to your family, your community, new 100yearlifestyle.com. By the way, have you been there? Have you checked it out? We've done a whole new platform for you with new content being added on a regular basis, new recipes, new featured stories, new healthcare strategies, ideas, same old, same olds. Also, the principles never change, but we are bringing it to you in a brand new way. We're really excited about it. Uh, we've got new eBooks for you, Raising Super Healthy Families, Becoming a Least Vulnerable Person, the Neurology eBook, How to Take Care of Your Nervous System with much more on the way. And we are also delivering a lot more new resources to our providers with new content for them. So in your community, if you have a 100-year lifestyle provider in your community, they can take care of you, educate you, your family, and be on the ground where you are because we have all kinds of new resources that are being validated out in the world for our work over the last 20 years as we have been leading this conversation literally for over the last 20 years. So let's get right into it. And I wanna spend today talking about 100% for 100 years. What does that really mean? Because we see if you're you know, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, whatever your age is, maybe you're 20 years old and you're listening to this because you have aging parents and grandparents and you wanna be healthy and you see that maybe they have lived in such a way that they are not healthy, they are suffering in their longevity and you don't wanna suffer the way that they suffered. You know that their choices the lifestyle that they live was not supportive of living 100% for 100 years. So they have literally been deteriorating for decades, some of them. We see it in our practice. We see people, beautiful people, beautiful souls. They have the idea. They want to do it. They want to live healthy. They want to be healthy, but they're just not changing. They're stuck in habit patterns that are causing them to rot away and deteriorate and decay. That is causing the sickness, the reason for the sickness. And so what we wanna do is we want you right now, starting right now to understand that no matter what state of the game you're at, no matter what age you are, you can change your life, you can raise your family differently, raise your kids differently. And so 100% for 100 years is literally, it's a culture, it's a culture within yourself to keep you healthy, functioning at the highest level throughout your entire lifetime. And so if you're in pregnancy right now, making healthier choices that support you being healthy, having a healthier child, it is absolutely true that in 99.9% .9 of the cases, there's always a one-off tragedy that is horrible. We weep for those people. We pray for those people. Absolutely. But that is not the norm. And so you think about for you, what is it that you can do to keep yourself healthy in, in pregnancy? eating healthy, good nutrition, exercise, keeping your spine aligned, getting adjusted, posture, all the good sleep, all of those things really important for a healthy pregnancy, which by the way, is also really important in the first year of life. So you take it, we're going to take it decade by decade by decade by decade. What can you do to stay healthy? So that if you're a grandparent, you could pass this on to your kids and your grandkids. And if you're a kid, you could pass it on to your grandparents so they can change. So you think about that first decade of life, there are so many factors from nursing, so important. You know, it really drives me crazy how the pharmaceutical industry and the powers that be in the world, these billion, multi-billion dollar corporations that are creating fake food for 
babies, kids, people of all ages, formulas, things like that, which of course, if you're having challenges nursing, maybe you need some supplementation that way. But most of that stuff, quite honestly, is crap. You got to really look around to find the right types of resources. There is nothing that takes the place of mother's milk. So nursing, good nutrition, healthy vegetables, organic food, no toxins, no GMOs, no glyphosate, as best that you can do to find them. And that is important through every phase of life, every phase of life, especially when you're in those formative years where your organs are growing, your organs are developing, and where your body is adapting at warp speed to the environment where a baby is raising their head up and they're starting to develop the proper spinal curves in their neck, the lordotic curve, we call it in the neck and in the lower back. And so building the strength in their muscles so they can stand erect and being on their belly instead of just laying on their back, staring at the stars, being on their belly and feeling with their fingers, their toes and propping themselves up and coordinating themselves in space and making sure that the alignment is good right from day one. I know in our practice, checking babies through every phase of life, kids all the way up through every stage of growth and development. Lots of our 100-year lifestyle practitioners, chiropractors, doctors doing that all over the place. And so you think about the first decade of life, how important it is as these children develop. And then the second day, decade of life, when their hormones start to kick in, really start to kick in, they reach puberty and their body is chemically changing how important it is to keep the nervous system healthy for good nutrition, not sitting all the time playing games, but actually being outside moving, building their immune system. You know, we grew up in New York and we had a, a funny statement sayings that we used to say, hey, eat the germs to guilt, kill the germs, play in the dirt, Hugs kill bugs and community equals immunity. And we lived our lives that way. We grew up with healthier immune systems, much healthier than the immune systems of these kids today, unfortunately, that are being challenged in so many ways and butchered in so many ways by 72 shots that were never tested in sequence like that uh, by the age of six years old. And uh, the way that it's harming their immune system, we now have a one in 30 autism rate. Are you kidding me? Come on, we have to wake up and start questioning the status quo because it is really creating all kinds of problems out in the world. And so during those formative years of teens, uh, hormones, puberty, all of those things, as we're developing in from women to men, from boys into girls, really important that everything is kept healthy. So it's 100% year one, 100% year two, 100% year three, 100% year four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, literally 20 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 49, 50 to 59, 60 to 69, 100% through all those years, every year, 70 to 79, 80 to 89, 90 to 99 to 100 and beyond. Literally every year, every decade, it is very important to maintain this consciousness as a culture for your family, for your business, for your work, for schools, to think this way instead of just dumbing us down with shots and drugs and harming us in so many ways and taking away our ability to think with all of the coercion that is happening out there in the world. So then we get to the 20s. We go to college. We graduate from college. Maybe we go get a job. We get in, in the workforce. Well, guess what? Keeping yourself healthy all along the way is really important. 30s. Maybe you've had kids. Maybe you're thinking about having kids. Maybe you're having some stress. You're going through some start of a midlife crisis. Did I do the right things? Did I not do the right things? Well, while you're trying to figure yourself out, it is very important to make decisions today, starting right now. Change, big word in the 100 year lifestyle world is change, that from 30 to 39, during that decade of your life, what a time to make some changes. I remember when I was 35 years old, uh, I really was struggling because, you know, I had a decent practice. I had a good practice. I was helping doctors, just started to help doctors out because we were, we were growing. We were doing really well, actually, in the world uh, with our practice, our chiropractic office in Georgia. And the challenge was, is that with three kids close together and just dealing with some stress in my life, I had let myself go. All the principles that I knew I needed to do, I stopped doing. And I started to gain a lot of weight. And between my third decade and my fourth decade of life, I literally gained nearly 60 pounds 
And I looked at myself one day and I realized, I said, wow, who is that whale in a bathing suit? And that whale was me. That was my interpretation of me. I'm not judging and criticizing anybody that's going through certain challenges that needs to make some changes. But I was just brutally honest with myself. I did not like the way I looked. And I said, you know what? During that decade, I said, I need to make some changes. And I got tired of dieting. You know, dieting is a conversation that is not 100-100. It's not 100% for 100 years. It's a roller coaster concept. It's not a long-term well-being concept. And so I changed my life. I decided, you know what? I'm going to make some permanent change. I'm not going to lose weight. I'm going to eliminate weight. I'm going to make myself healthy. I'm going to live the principles of the 100-year lifestyle that I know are good for me. And then we did. I did. And we've kept it off ever since. So we eliminated that nearly 60 pounds and it's been off ever since. And now here I am turning 60 this year, probably the healthiest that I've been in my whole life. And so you have the ability, whether you're in your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, your 60s or your 70s, the ability to make some changes and the principles that we are going to go over. If you're in your 60s and maybe you have been crisis care oriented uh, and maybe you're in your 30s and you're crisis care oriented, we're going to get into this more in just a little bit, or in your 60s and 70s and you've been crisis care oriented, we're seeing this all the time in our practices where people, are they see their x-rays, they see their uh, posture and they say, you know what, man, I need to get ahead of this because I'm going in the wrong direction. And what I love about this, and we've seen this with Max's story. Uh, if you have not listened to Max's story, go back and listen to our first podcast. Go to 100yearlifestyle.com. But this is the 100-year-old person that changed my life who came in at 98 years old, crippled, broken, alone, asked me to be able to help him. I didn't know if I was going to be able to help him. I started to adjust him. And wouldn't you know it, real gently and over a short period of time, seeing his life change, he got his health back even at the age of 98 and 99. And I'm not gonna spoil the end of the story for you because it's an amazing story. It's the story that sparked the 100-year lifestyle. You can watch it on 100yearlifestyle.com under the about vision area of the site. But if he can change and he can do it at 98, no matter what your age is, remember that your body's innate intelligence, your innate intelligence, this amazing power within you, this vitalistic power within you, it has the ability, it's running your body without you, it hasn't killed you yet, it's keeping you alive in spite of you. And regardless of your age, if you choose to optimize the expression of that innate intelligence and you change your life, your body will respond. It's a beautiful thing. It may take a little more time, but listen, you've been abusing it for many people that have been abusing their bodies for literally 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, their whole life. And so it's time to make some changes, having faith in that innate intelligence and taking action uh, so that you can really make a difference for yourself. And, you know, we have been leading this movement for a long time. We've been leading this movement for over 20 years. The 100 Year Lifestyle came out in 2007. We were teaching it before that. And what's really interesting, in the last three months, the amount of validation of the work that we have been doing, not that we needed it, because we have that validation with the individuals on the ground, the people that our offices around the country are taking care of. If you're not a 100-year lifestyle affiliated office uh, and you're doing chiropractic care, holistic care that is making a difference without shots, without drugs, any of that stuff, and you want to provide primary care with a natural flair under the 100-year lifestyle umbrella, uh, check it out. Contact us because we want to add these types of providers in every community. If you're a company that you have holistic support products that optimize the innate intelligence of the body, uh, we want to talk to you. We want to help you get your message to more people because we are seeing in the world this industrial complex, this longevity industrial complex beginning to form with organizations that have not really done anything in the world to promote this until now when they're realizing, you know what, there's a lot of money in this. And they're trying to reorganize th themselves to reach out and get people to just buy things that aren't necessarily tested, aren't necessarily good for you. We've seen that just recently with this entire pandemic response, untested, now people just frustrated. You know, there's people that knew right up front that the immune systems were strong, that people could handle it, that it was about vulnerabilities, it wasn't about a virus, and that 
this untested experimental uh, mRNA procedure, the damages that it could cause to people. And we're seeing the terrible effects of that now. And it's starting to pop up, even though it's being censored. Anybody who's paying any attention with critical thinking is waking up and saying, you know what, listen, I need to change. I need to turn off that industrial complex, that medical industrial complex, that pharmaceutical industrial complex, and I need to focus. Well, you're seeing this longevity industrial complex forming, and it's interesting, the AARP, they just came out with a report showing that people, they went by every decade, surveying every decade, and every single one of those decades, nearly everyone wants to live to 100, and they would be willing to take a pill, they'd be willing to change, they'd be willing to do whatever it takes to get there healthy, and providing them good information is really, really important. So it's really interesting in their second half of life study, uh, they teamed up with National Geographic to do the research and recommend everything that we've been talking about for the last 20 years. It's very exciting for us. We have such a head start on all of these people. And think about with this industrial complex, these people, 100-year-old people, they've lived to 100 without all of these things. It becomes a quality of life issue for you, for your family. And it's not a matter of adding things to what you're doing. Some of you, maybe it is. It's a matter of eliminating the interference. Stop doing the things that are damaging you. Start doing the things that are good for you and make those things your new lifestyle. So when you look at those stats, it's really exciting and interesting to realize that they're paying attention finally to the reality of our extended lives. Uh, Edward Jones just came out with a report, the financial uh, organization, because they talk about longevity in the new retirement. We wrote about it in 2007 in the 100-Year Lifestyle. It's in a lot of the articles on 100yearlifestyle.com. We have articles on health, wealth, and living to 100. Uh, we have asset protection things that are going to be coming out from some of our sponsors there that are going to be fantastic for you. And there is this new journey of retirement because retirement is an outdated concept. It's interesting what they say in this report. They say, it's on 100yearlifestyle.com also. This is validation, not necessary, but it's everywhere. You're going to see it everywhere. They say over half of Americans born today may live to be 100. Very interesting, very exciting. It's in a lot of our earlier podcasts. And they ask the question, that is also 100yearlifestyle.com. Do you want to live to be 100? What if you don't want to live to be 100? It's very interesting. What, what has changed, what has changed is that every generation is showing an increase in wanting to live to be 100 because they see their aging parents and grandparents. Maybe they've taken our empire formula quiz on 100yearlifestyle.com. It's on the homepage. It's the first article on 100 Year Lifestyle Essentials. When it says calculate your empire, your minimum potential years remaining, where you just put in a couple of numbers and we'll give you your minimum, not maximum, but your minimum potential years that you have left based on your family history and your current age. And way back when we started teaching this, it was a smaller percentage of people that wanted to live to be 100. But now what we're seeing is because people are seeing their aging parents and grandparents, they're realizing, wow, I have those genes but I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be like that. I have those genes, but I don't want to be like that. I want to live differently. I want health and vitality. And now we are seeing the Gen Zs, for example, 72% of them are saying they want to live to be 100. Millennials, 74% of them want to live to be 100. 67% of Gen Xs, 62% of the baby boomers and the silent generation, 74% want to live to be 100. And that's an exciting thing because they're realizing that, you know what, maybe I can take some responsibility here. And if you're willing to take that responsibility, it's a very exciting opportunity for your life, your wisdom. And there is also new research that has come out where they have talked about that the most productive decades of life are 60 to 70. The second most productive decade of life, 70 to 80, the third most productive decade, 50 to 60. So when you look at that, if you're 30 and you're listening to this and you're excited about the possibilities of your life and you're really on a good track, you should really be an ex have a lot of excitement because you realize, oh my gosh, maybe I'm just like in third grade with this. <laughs> and then if you're, maybe if you're not happy, you realize, wow, you know what? I got some time to figure this out. Time is on your side. And if you stay true, to trusting your innate intelligence, following your path, 
learning these principles, making the changes that you know you need to make. There's no reason why you cannot, from this point forward, make those changes to enjoy a sensational century. And we see it with baby boomers. We see the baby boomers, the number of Americans age 65 and older has almost tripled in the last 50 years. The problem is, is that people are living longer, but they are not living better. We see assisted living centers on every corner. They have become depositories for people's retirement accounts because remember, it's not age. We're not blaming age. You cannot blame age. This is not borrowed time. This is birthright time. And so why are people rotting away? It's because they were blindsided by their extended lifespan. It's not because of their age. They just didn't know how to take care of themselves to ensure quality of life. Well, it's different now. The 100-year lifestyle way is different. It will get you there in style 100% for 100 years. Unfortunately, the United States of America, because we have become a drug culture, we take we have 5% of the world's population. We take 95% of the world's drugs, and you'd think that would make us healthier. But no, we have a lower life expectancy than almost every other industrialized nation. We have a lower quality of life expectancy as people age. We have more people spending more time in nursing homes. Our health span in the United States does not match our lifespan different than any other country. And we need to get our act together and we need new leadership. And it's important when you understand leadership, there's a quote, I'll never forget this quote by, I think it was Paul Zane Pilsner in Unlimited Wealth or God Wants You to Be Rich. I, I forget which book it was, but he there was a quote that really got my attention. He said, the hunting dog marched proudly in front of the hunters, keeping a watchful eye to make sure that he was being followed. When the hunters turned to grow into in a new direction, the hunting dogs turned, sprinted in front of the hunters, proudly proclaiming their place as the hunter's leader. And we're seeing this hunting dog situation happening in the world because we're seeing the drug companies and the pharma and the big food and the big ag and all of this stuff. And they are literally reorganizing marketing for longevity when they have nothing to do with longevity in so many ways. And so what we want you to do is we want you to be open. We want you to make these changes because when you think about what's happening today and this statistic kind of, it makes me sad because life expectancy, according to a research that came out in 2021, just last year, actually, that life expectancy in the United States has dropped to the lowest level since World War II. It's the biggest drop, I should say, the biggest drop since World War II. And what's interesting about that is people say, how is it that people can be lo living longer, Dr. Plasker, but they are, the life expectancy is going down? And the answer is tragic, honestly. It's because the younger people are dying younger and sicker than ever because of lifestyle choices because of the chemicals in the environment, because of the in chemical in the injections, because of the neurological damage that's happening, because of the toxins in the food. This one in 30 autism spectrum rate in kids is a terrible wake up call. It's expected to get much worse over the next decade or two. So we need to wake up, we need to do things differently. And uh, one more quote for you from the late great Stephen Covey, who he, I love this quote, he said, some people climb the ladder of success and get to the top and they realize the ladder was leaning against the wrong wall. And we have an entire healthcare system with the ladder leaning against the wrong wall. And the second half of the quote, which is often not discussed, is he says that every step we take in the wrong direction takes us to the wrong place faster. And so we don't wanna go in the wrong direction. We have to reverse these trends. My friends, my brothers, my sisters, my colleagues, we have to reverse this trend. So the 100 year lifestyle way, it is not borrowed time, it is birthright time. And the 100 year lifestyle way is simple. So let's begin with the healthcare hierarchy of the 100 year lifestyle, let's define it so you can begin to make some changes. Go back and listen to the earlier podcast on the change principles, on mastering personal change, the habit patterns that optimize energy, 
Those podcasts are really valuable. People that love that. They're really valuable in helping you get on track, making personal change. I have people that have told me they've listened to those several podcasts, two, three, four, five, ten 10 times. And so this one is also hopefully that kind of a message that really keeps you inspired in the game, motivated, believing in yourself 100% for 100 years. So let's talk about the healthcare hierarchy of the 100-year lifestyle. The healthcare hierarchy of the current system, it's do nothing, eat bad food, wait for a crisis, take care of yourself, fix the crisis, and go back to the bad habits. That is not the 100-year lifestyle way. The 100-year lifestyle way in the healthcare hierarchy, it's self-care first, healthcare second, crisis care last. Self-care first, healthcare second, crisis care last. So what is self-care? Self-care, these are the things that you need to do for yourself that nobody can do for you. For example, nobody can sleep for you. That is something that you're just going to have to do for yourself. So having the right habits, pre-sleep, eating the right foods, keeping your spine adjusted, keeping your nervous system settled down and balanced, meditating, clearing your head, clearing your day. These are all things that will be supportive. Having the right bed, having the right pillows, all of these things are very supportive of helping you reducing caffeine, simple things that you can change, lifestyle things that you can do to ensure that you get better sleep because nobody can sleep for you. We see this with addicts. We see this with people who have chronic pain, who are not sleeping well and how destructive it is to their entire life, their entire body. Listen, sleep deprivation is a form of torture in war. Sleep is vital, self-care. Nobody can sleep for you. Nobody can sweat for you. People say, well, I don't know if I want to exercise. <laughs> I don't know if I like to exercise. Uh, people say in yoga, they say, well, I'm glowing. I'm not sweating. Well, sweating can make you glow because it cleanses you. That's one of the ways that we cleanse, that our body cleanses is sweating. Exercise, fitness, super duper important. But that's also one of those things that nobody can do for you. You have to do it for yourself. Fitness is very important. We have a lot of fitness articles and information on 100yearlifestyle.com, the 100 Year Lifestyle workout book filled with great fitness tips uh, to support you. It's 12 years old now and it's still going strong. People are still getting it. Uh, and we're in the process over the next year of repackaging a lot of that information into different ways that you can utilize it. But once again, most importantly here, self-care, these are things that you have to do for yourself that you can't, that nobody else can do for you. Eating, you have to eat for yourself. If you don't have good self-care and you become unconscious, unfortunately, sadly, so many people, assisted living centers popping up on every corner, you see these beautiful souls that did not know how to take care of themselves all along the way, the accidental centenarians, and they are being fed through feeding tubes, through family members, through nurses, because their self-care along the way was not proper. They did not take care of themselves the 100-year lifestyle way, most of them, many of them. So self-care, do those things, make those changes that are good for you, make them your new lifestyle. And as we say, you've heard me say this many times, learn to love the things that are good for you and make them your new lifestyle. Next, healthcare. Listen, we do not have a healthcare system in this country. Our healthcare system is, is completely out of control. It is the unhealthiest system. Hospitals are the unhealthiest places. They're the highest degree of infection rates happen in hospitals. Uh, they're the leading cause of death, one of the leading causes of death through accidents. It is a terrible system that we have. It is out of control and we have more and more people. In our practice in Marietta, Georgia, we have more and more people that are coming in, and these are not my words, these are their words. You know what, I hate this system. I hate my doctor. All they wanna do is give me drugs. They wanna give me one drug for the last drug, for the side effect of that drug. They wanna take my organs out. They don't spend any time with me. They don't talk to me about health. They only talk to me about covering up my symptoms. And I'm not saying that that's the case for all doctors, but I gotta tell you, I mean, we know some great doctors that we recommend people to, but the majority, quite honestly, they are victims of a pharma education that is all about drug-oriented care. 
And the average person over the age of 65 is taking a minimum of three drugs. Uh, more than that are taking five, seven, 10 drugs as they get older, the side effects, taking drugs that are for side effects of other drugs. Nobody ever talks about it with them. There is no answer. They have no answer. They are overwhelmed with sickness that they cannot do health. Thomas Edison made a quote way back. This is in 1903. And his quote was, and it's being used by a lot of our colleagues, chiropractors around the country, a lot of nutritionists use this quote. Uh, and it's a great quote and it's simple and it's real. And he said in 1903, he said, the doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will interest his patients in the care of the human frame, in diet, and in the cause and prevention of disease. And that was a great quote, great quote, still true today, except for one thing, is that he said it, doctor of the future, he said it 120 years ago. And so we've changed the quote. We are bringing that quote into the present because it's valid, except for that it's in the past. So here's the new quote. I actually said this quote on a on an interview that I did in for the first time, October 25th, 2010 was the first time I introduced this quote. And I, all I did was change one word and add a hyphen. And the new quote is this, the doctor of the present, not future, but the doctor of the present will give no medicine, but will interest his patients in the care of the human frame, in diet, and in the cause and prevention of dis hyphen ease, dis ease. So be present. And except for life-threatening situations, this is how, this is the 100-year lifestyle way, keeping yourself healthy, keep eating the right foods, taking care of your frame, keeping your body functioning correctly, understanding dis-ease and what causes the disharmony, the weakness, the imbalance in your body. We talk about it in our practice all the time, all these principles. They are a core value of the 100-year lifestyle affiliate relationships that we have around the country, the doctors that are leading communities in this conversation, so excited about what they're doing, correcting subluxations, finding interference in the spine and nervous system, removing interference, helping people eat healthier, getting people moving, getting people to spend less time sitting off of technology, educating families on how to be healthier, raising super healthy families, becoming least vulnerable people, taking care of their nervous system, being more resistant, to all of the challenges out there in the world. The doctor of the present, these are things that you need for yourself that you can't necessarily do for yourself. Self-care, you gotta do it yourself. This here, healthcare, these are things that you need that you can't do to yourself. Listen, I can have good posture, but I cannot adjust my own spine. Understanding that crisis care, so we have the self-care and healthcare, understanding that crisis care is the last thing Crisis care, you may need it. We are glad those crisis care people are there, the emergency room centers, the people that are treating severe disease. Uh, and there's, by the way, there's multiple ways to do it. There's not just one way, but God forbid you get a, a severe diagnosis or you have an injury, severe injury, an accident of some sort, a fall, a car accident, uh, or a severe health crisis, a diagnosis. Crisis care is the last piece of this healthcare hierarchy. We were glad those people are there. We need them, the ambulance people. We need them, the sickness diagnostic people and the treatment people. They're important. They help save lives. We love and appreciate them. And this is the last piece. We'd like to marginalize those people so much over the next couple of decades because we are filling the world with healthier people living at 100% for 100 years. It's so important. We talk about, go back and listen to the podcast, the article, Primary Care with a Natural Flair. That is the 100-year lifestyle way, keeping yourself healthy through every single decade of life. So many things that we've talked about here that are important, that can make a difference for you. Probably a lot of tips that if you go back, listen to it over and over again, it's going to make a massive difference for you, your family, your loved ones. And so just as we wind down here, I want to welcome you back to our new launch series of 100-Year Lifestyle Podcasts. Go to 100yearlifestyle.com. It is a brand new platform with amazing amounts of content that covers your health, your vitality, your longevity, great 100-year stories, great recipes, paleo, uh, vegan, soups, broths, things like that that are really good for you. We have great fitness information. We have amazing retirement information. More coming on that too. You're going to see 
We're going to see that in retirement is an outdated concept. We're going to spend more time educating you on how to take care of yourself later on in life. More family health information coming, pregnancy, childbirth, all of that coming soon. Work, education, environment, air, water, literally everything related to supporting you and your loved ones live at 100% for 100 years it is coming your way as we relaunch underyourlifestyle.com in a way that speaks to everybody in every phase of life. Because remember, your 100 is coming. You make the call. Subscribe to our newsletter. Stay connected. And thanks for being with us today, everybody. Here's to you and your loved ones enjoying a sensational century. Dr. Eric Plaster signing off. Thank you so much for joining us on the 100 Year Lifestyle Podcast. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have topics that you want us to cover, people you want us to interview, maybe you have some stories that you want to share, stories of yourself, loved ones, people in your life, we would love to hear from you and share your story. Please email us at my100 at 100yearlifestyle.com. And remember, nobody wants to get to 100 or even 50, 60, or 70 for that matter, crippled, broken, alone. So please share the 100 Year Lifestyle, all of our podcasts, social media pages, website with your family, friends, and coworkers so they can take this journey with you. And until next time, adjust your lifestyle, live your best life today and every day on the road to a sensational century.